What up? It's Melvin7 here, and uh, I'm back, like, after a month break, I think, uh, which I think I needed. I was starting to not enjoy YouTube, but uh, I'm going to be bringing it back. I'm going to be enjoying it again, uh, bringing football videos, FIFA 18, when that drops. Um, but I'm not sure what the schedule will be, anything like that. Uh, life goes on, I suppose. Uh, you, you, this is a hobby, it's something I enjoy, but obviously it's got to take second pedal to real life, jobs, university, whatever. So we'll see how it goes, but for now I wanted to come back with a something that hopefully can help some people uh, going through stuff, whether they're younger, whether they're older, um, because although I haven't really done much with my life, I've had a lot happen within it, and it's something that I want to open up about. I think it'll help me. Hopefully it can help some other people if they've been through similar things, or even if they haven't, if they've been through things that are worse, um, just to know that other people will definitely have been through what you've been through and sometimes it's easier to talk. For me personally, it's much easier to talk to a camera than a real person. Certain people I can open up uh, to, but you know, when I'm going through like an entire life or whatever, I just find it easier talking to a camera and uh, yeah, I think this is the easiest way I can do it. Um, I've got to say Bateson's It's Me videos, I believe they are kind of inspired me to actually go out and do this. It was something that I did want to do for quite some time, but I've never really had the confidence. I've always had low self-esteem or whatever, even doing YouTube, uh, even talking to a camera. I uh, don't mind it with FIFA or whatever, but when you're talking about personal things, it, it is hard to talk about it. So I hope you is appreciate the, the right word, because obviously some people won't even give a shit, and that's perfectly fine. Like Sometimes, you know, I wouldn't care about other people's lives or whatever or think you don't care and it's just the way of humanity really but yeah like hopefully this can help people that's the whole reason for it and uh, if someone out there cares then yeah I suppose that you know this has been worth it but uh, anyway let's let's get into my life um, so yeah my name is Aiden Stevenson some people might not know that, quite a lot of my subscribers might not, given my channel is called Melvin7. The reason for that is uh, one of my mates in Gosworth on the football field called me Melvin for whatever reason, so from then on in it stuck. And uh, my favourite uh, music uh, artist, he's a rapper, Tech9, uh, he uses N9NE for his 9 bit. My favourite number is 7, S7VEN. It fit Melvin7. Perfect. It's an alias. It's someone that I could not pretend to be because it, it, it's just something I could do aside from being the real person. It was like, you know, real life was a bit separate to YouTube, if that makes any sense. It kind of was easier for me to do that um, and just be Melvin7 rather than Aiden Stevenson. That might sound weird to some people because I'm the same person, but yeah, it, it was just easier doing that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a... I'm an absolute nerd when it comes to things like that. I obviously love gaming. <laughs> I have an unhealthy obsession with football, but <laughs> it is what it is. I'm honestly obsessed with uh, that and Manchester United, as everyone who follows me on any sort of social media or knows me in real life will know. Uh, I love TV, like Game of Thrones, Doctor Who. They're my uh, two favourite. I love other things like power, uh, the genre of music that most entices me or that's not the right word the, the the one that I'm the biggest fan of is rap music I like a lot of other stuff but rap music is definitely something that I could connect with something that felt real to me because I see you know you hear in um, songs it, it's all about uh, love or whatever or uh, happiness sometimes it's about depression and things like that but you know like rap genre as a whole most of it is about becoming something from nothing and I could definitely relate to that especially when I was younger so that's why that is my favorite genre uh, I don't think it well nowadays some rap is kind of pretty garbage I'm not gonna lie but uh, there's a lot still that is really really good now nowadays and uh, I can still relate to that but yeah uh, I love Twitter as well like, I'm always on Twitter and uh, the reason for that I don't know I, I can kind of express myself like I don't have to put photos of myself like Snapchat, Instagram, even Facebook to a, to an extent. Like I don't like posting photos of myself because I don't like the way I look. Uh, I, I've always thought of myself as an ugly person and uh, I've always been told throughout my life that I am. So 
you know, that kind of, it, it gets in your head and you start to believe it or whatever, regardless of who tells you you're not, you always feel it because, you know, if, if I was the opposite sex, for example, there's no way I would look twice at myself. And that's the honest truth. That's, you know, it's hard to admit on camera saying that you're ugly or whatever. But yeah, like generally, I, I just dislike posting pictures of myself because I don't like the way I look. And I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to do things to improve the way I look. Like back in the day when I was a kid, I got my ears pinned back. Um, and that helped because I had like proper stick out ears. Um, now I've uh, had my teeth whitened. I'm in the process of that happening. Uh, like you wear this little mold. I think um, like overnight I, I'm halfway through that. Uh, I want to try and like get my acne sorted on my face because I absolutely hate that. Like acne. Oh my god, I I just despise that. Like I'm sure anyone who has it can be able to relate to that. It's just. It's horrible and that's kind of the thing that makes me think I'm ugly and everything because it, it's just horrible to look at like ugh, it, it's horrendous I've also got like eczema on my fingers which is something that's recently happened which <sighs> it's just really really annoying like it's just something like that I just don't like about myself so it, it's hard for me to accept myself for who I am and love yourself i suppose uh so that's something that causes depression causes low self-esteem which is something i've had throughout the entirety of my life and uh I i'm trying to build on that you know i've got some really good close friends and they help but it it's just it's just you know feeling good about yourself i really want to do that so yeah i want to see someone see if i can you know get the, the acne reduced removed and i'm sure i'd be a lot more happy with the way I look because that's the main thing that makes me hate who I am and I know there's there'll be a lot of people watching who have low self-esteem who feel similarly and um yeah like you know it's hard it really is hard to deal with it and uh it's something that I want to move on with you know get into a, a relationship with a girl all that and uh be able to do that the reason I can't is again because I'm I'm such low self-esteem i always think that they are going to be thinking the exact same as me which a lot of the time they will but yeah it, it's just a negative mentality it's hard to talk sometimes to girls i'm sure a lot of people have that problem honestly yeah it's it's embarrassing as fuck talking about this in front of a camera but a lot of people will have it a lot of people will just be wondering oh what a sad fuck like honestly fucking hell grow up all that but yeah, you live and learn and hopefully I can deal with that and improve my self-esteem. But yeah, that's why I'm, I'm not really that active on Snapchat. That's why I, I just don't like Instagram. I think it's fake as fuck. Like, if people like Instagram, that's perfectly fine. But I don't know, I just hate looking on that because it's always the best things of people's lives. And that's what it's supposed to be. If you've got, you know, things to be proud of, yeah, it's great to have them on social media. But I don't know, it just feels fake. Like, it feels as though... It's just something that isn't me, so that's why I don't use that as much. Facebook, I really use that for Messenger, not a lot else. Twitter, on the other hand, you don't have to post images. You don't have to post anything like that. You can just talk about whatever you want for the you know, the entire thing, so that's kind of what I do. And mostly it's football, uh, because that's kind of where my knowledge is at. But yeah, about my life, um, within, well, <laughs> before I was born, uh, my father left me. Um, so I've never actually met him. I know his name. Uh, he's Michael Walker. And honestly, I just have no desire to ever f like see him or whatever. I don't know what I would do if I actually did see him. Because it's just one of those things. Like the, the twat left me before I was born. Never wanted anything to do with me. Never inquired about me. Never never gave a shit. Like I don't even know if he knows I still exist. Like I don't even know if he's dead. or uh, pfft, No idea. He left me before I was... I was uh, born, as I say, and then uh, my, my mom, I live with her, uh, she had my brother uh, two years after me, and uh, his father was abusive to her, so I saw that from an early age, uh, from the ages of two to seven, I saw, you know, my mom getting beaten up, uh, getting uh, abused, whatever, like, it was, it's horrible to deal with as a child, and, um, yeah, uh, we had, I think the worst thing, I, I, I don't think it was to do with the father of... Uh, my brother but we got uh, I remember vividly we got like an armed robbery happened in our house and oh my god that that was just 
such a scary situation. I was like six or seven at the time. It was a place called Battle Hill in Newcastle. It got its name correctly. Like there was fights every single night. It was a horrible, horrible place. And uh, yeah, that that was the worst thing that happened while I was there, uh, living with my mum. Uh, two years after my brother, she had my sister. Um, and again, like the guy she was with was still abusive and eventually social services stepped in they took me and my brother into care and my sister because i think at the time she was two she was uh, young enough to get adopted so she got adopted she's got a completely new name i haven't seen her since well since i was six or seven and uh, i'm 21 now so that's 14 years give or take and uh, she'd be i think 18 this year she was born on halloween um but yeah, I haven't seen her in over a decade. And uh, yeah, so that's my father and my sister that I've never really properly known or seen. And uh, that, that wasn't wasn't great. But uh, as I say, me and my brother, we got moved into care, into our first placement, um, which was with an older couple who had very, very backwards views about technology. They were a very old-fashioned uh, couple, uh, Anne and Dave, I think they were called. They were in their 60s, and to be honest, I don't think they should have been carers. They, they weren't right. Uh, they seemed to only want one of us, and God knows why they took both of us, but uh, they wanted my brother more than me, probably because he was younger. They thought, you know, they could have, they would, could care for him longer than me because I was uh, a couple of years older. So for whatever reason, they, uh, they ended up getting me moved to a different placement. So, uh, yeah, I never had the best of times there. It was, oh, oh I, I really hated that house. Uh, didn't really like the carers either for obvious reasons but um yeah i moved over uh to cramlington to a, a really really good placement the best one i've had uh with louise and fran now a lot of people when they when you talk about foster care they don't really understand what it is and that's understandable because if you've never been in the system then you're not going to understand you're not going to know uh, but a lot of people think it's like Tracy Beaker. Well, certainly they did when I was growing up. I don't know what the younger generation think now. Uh, maybe they're a bit more, you know, knowledgeable about this sort of thing. But yeah, sometimes it can be. That's known as a children's home, um, where you've got workers coming in and they change shifts or whatever, and then you've got a bunch of kids who are are in a a big house, so it, it it's a children's home. But a foster family is completely different. It's supposed to be a replacement for a father and a mother. Sometimes you'll only have a, a mother or a father. They're not known as them, but the carers, you know, that's kind of what you see them as. You know, they, they see to your needs as a child or whatever. So that's kind of what they are, a mother or a father figure. And uh, yeah, Louise and Fran, definitely the best placement I had. Um, I learned a lot there. Uh, probably because of things that happened to me in earlier life like uh, I started to go down the wrong scene at the start of that placement and they, they got me on the right track they kind of helped me like when I went there I, I thieved a lot from uh, Asda things like that and uh, I got caught by the police and I'd say that was probably one of the best things that's happened to me in my life because from then on in I've never committed a crime never had any desire to and uh, yeah, it, it did the trick, me getting caught by them, and I kind of got my life back on track. I was young though, so you know you can get away with it because you're a kid, like you, you're still learning about life, about the world. So uh, yeah, I, I got caught when I was like 10 or 11 or whatever. Never really done a crime ever since. Um, but yeah, and then I, I started to hang out with not the you know the bad people or the the people that go down the wrong path and do drugs and all that stuff like some some people who do drugs are, are not bad people uh i i know some people that do some people who see it as a release and i respect that you know I, i've got no hate for anyone i don't judge if people do it or whatever but uh personally for me i'm happy that i didn't and uh, i've never really had any desire i've never smoked i've never done a drug i i do drink uh you know i don't think there's anything wrong with you know having a drink uh, having a laugh with your mates whatever um, as long as it's not like all the time, it's not excessive and everything, and it doesn't harm you uh, physically. Is that the right word? But um, yeah, as I say, I learned a lot there, and uh, I eventually had a stable uh, placement that I enjoyed living in, and I also had a, a stable education because prior to that, I'd moved schools all the time, every year or two. Uh, but at this one, I, I managed to stay there for a while. 
uh, the first school I went to was a, a middle school called Stonewall. And in my final year, it actually got knocked down. And uh, it sounds probably grim with a name like Stonewall, but nah, it was really, really good. I was a little shit, a little nuisance, you know, getting into trouble all the time, getting into tension. Uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things as a kid, like the teachers must have hated me as a kid. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. I moved into um, what's known as the JLV, now the Junior Learning Village and then Cramlington Learning Village. It went from a middle school to a, a secondary school. I have no idea, but yeah, anyway, uh, I was there for a number of years. I enjoyed it there. I made some good friends. Um, throughout that kind of period as well, I, I made friends with other people that had difficulties in their life, like either um, there was one uh, really, really good mate that I had that I still talk to now and then who uh, had, I think it was uh, autism. It was a form of autism. Um, and yeah, he was like my best friend then. And I felt like I could relate to him for different reasons. He had different difficulties. I had difficulties with parents and everything, like not really having a stable family or whatever. So I got on really well with him. And uh, yeah, it, it again, it teaches you about life and about how no matter how bad you feel about yourself, there's always someone who can either relate to it or has had a worse experience than you. So it kind of humbled me in a way. And uh, yeah, like honestly, he was really, really a good, good friend that I had during then. And um, yeah, uh, after that, uh, again, <laughs> with placements, it was steady for like four or five years. But then I got to a teenager, uh, I think I was like 13, 14. And I suppose Louise and Fran, for as good as carers as they wanted, uh, sorry, as they were, they wanted to have like younger kids uh, not deal with, you know, <laughs> the the things that come with puberty and you know your teenage years the rebellious stage or whatever so uh yeah i ended up leaving uh going on to a, a new placement and they got some younger children in and uh i moved on to gosforth with another uh foster placement this time it was just a woman called sarah and my god did i learn about discipline in that house like wow i have never came a across a more like a stricter human being in my life um, I think it was a bit over the top at times and it kind of harmed my development socially. Like I wasn't able, particularly in your teenage years, you know, you want to be out with your mates to a, certainly a later time than 7 p.m. And uh, yeah, I had to be in by 7 no matter what, sometimes 6. Uh, I had to have like my Xbox controller, laptop, all of that out of my room by 8 or whatever for like, you know, the younger teenage years. And I suppose that's why I was so clingy to things like gaming, uh, just because I was deprived of it uh, from Anne and Dave in an earlier uh, care placement, as I say, and I was deprived of it now. So I kind of craved it a bit more because it was something that I really enjoyed. So having restrictions on that kind of, it, it has a negative impact on you. So you kind of want to play them more. Uh, so... Yeah, that didn't really help. And again, I, I wasn't very social there um, and it kind of harmed my social development. It took me a while to actually want to go out and do things uh, like I love playing football, things like that during the day. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, as a kid, like I would do all of that. I would uh, ride bikes, climb trees. Oh, I used to love that. Play like uh, tag or well, it wasn't tag, was it? It was, um, you know, all the, ki the games you play as a kid, uh, bulldogs or whatever, like all that stuff. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed that, but certainly later in life, like doing things, uh, socializing, it wasn't as I would have hoped it would have been, but there was a, a kid that lived there, uh, called Anthony, uh, some of my long-term subscribers, there won't be too many of you left, uh, <laughs> no surprise there, cause I'm very inconsistent as a YouTuber, but, uh, yeah, he did YouTube for a year or two. Uh, the Mr. AC, and yeah, he's uh, someone I could definitely, you know, confide in, like, uh, I, I saw him as a brother, like, I lived with him for five, six years, so yeah, he was someone I could definitely relate to, he's, I would say my best friend now, but I, I call him a brother, so yeah, he's like a bit more than a best friend, um, and yeah, he's someone I can talk to now, and I'm still in contact, so I was grateful for that during uh, Sarah's being able to you know, have someone like that, like someone you can call a brother. And um, like my real brother, uh, he'd obviously been separated from me. I had contact, this thing called 
contact is what it's called where you know if you want to uh, talk to your family members or whatever you have a specific time and then you you see them with a social worker present you do different activities or whatever and then eventually after a lot of time uh, it's cleared that you can see them on your own so i did that with my brother with uh, my mom and finally i was so happy for her that she'd found a man that wasn't abusive he was honestly a phenomenal human being uh, he was called les sandgren and uh, they were living out in holland they would both got jobs or whatever so it was nice to see my, my mom doing something positive with her life uh, you know, instead of being with abusive men who were just vile and just the lowest of the low man, the absolute scum. But uh, yeah, so I had contact during this period and eventually uh, I ended up living with my mom again for a year or two and Les, uh, who I definitely saw as a father uh, figure, some, something I never really had throughout my life. And I, I literally call him my, my father now. Uh, like he's definitely way 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 more of a dad than my birth father who i just i don't want anything to do with ever so uh, yeah he was the the guy i could confide in again as a father i could you know do things like play football um watch football watch sports talk about things like you know just just things you do with your dad you know like yeah it was something i'd never had in my life so i was very grateful for that um i like playing pool uh, bowling things like that it was just great to have something that i'd never experienced in my life and uh yeah i was very grateful uh for five or six years so yeah i moved back with them for two years i think i lived with them uh, after leaving sarah's uh, i still stayed in contact with uh, people a couple of people from cramlington uh and and who i lived with uh during my placement with Sarah's and then I went to school in Gosforth, uh, sixth form, made some good friends there um, and yeah the friend that ended up calling me Melvin and that stuck in Gosforth, I was known as Melvin uh, which I didn't mind, I liked the name, like well I obviously do or I wouldn't name my channel after it so yeah that was good, um, the usual stuff with sixth form I suppose you, you yeah you just I don't know, it's it's just an extension of school really, it's just one of those things. You do it to either get an apprenticeship or go into university. But yeah, I lived with uh, my, my father and my mother there and uh, it, it was good, really, really good. I moved into university eventually, uh, I got double distinction star in sixth form in IT. Um, literally, I made sure that I did that. It, it was a B-Tech, so it's easier, there was no exams, it was all coursework, but I made sure that every single unit I got a distinction star apart from the final one where I didn't I got a merit and I was pretty yeah pretty disappointed with that but uh, <laughs> regardless I got double distinction star and the actual course that I decided to do in university media I got a D uh, so yeah because I was a lazy shit and I just wanted to get the UCAS points to get into university so I went to uh, Sunderland University and as I say I had very low self-esteem and I was very apprehensive about moving into student accommodation after living with my mom and uh, Les. And yeah, I uh, honestly, it was one of the best decisions I've made in my life. Like I've had ups and downs in student accommodation, but if anyone's feeling apprehensive, really, it, it's such a good thing to do. It toughens you up. It like teaches you independence, living independently. Um, and also it teaches you just life skills and the uni life and all that like just going out drinking going out enjoying things meeting new people like it, it's a really really good experience but some people can be really afraid of it and i'm not gonna lie i was one of those people but i'm so glad that i just went for it like i, I decided to do it and i'm happy i did um even though again i had my ups and downs with the people in the flat or whatever uh it, it's just normal i suppose and um i enjoyed it like that was good but within that year, Les, who, again, I call my father. I'm just going to call him my father from now on. Like, legit, that's what he was. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away during that year. And it, it really, really did hit me hard. Uh, it probably hit me even harder than my mom. Um, it, it Obviously, it hit her really, really hard. But it was just something that I felt like I'd finally got, like, a father and then losing him after just five six years i was grateful to have that time with him but there was so much more that i wanted to do because i had low self-esteem i never really 
got to go out drinking with him, you know, in the bar, chilling, uh, like watching a match while having a few drinks, stuff like that. I never actually got to do that. And it's just things, when, when someone dies, and I'm sure a lot of people will obviously have been through death and, you know, had someone close to them who's died, whether it be someone in their close family like a parent or a brother a sister or an auntie a, a grandfather a grandma something like that like it, it's it really hits you hard and it's obviously something that is just so horrible and yeah it's just worse when you think of things that you wanted to do and you can't it's just it, it really hurts and inside you you don't blame yourself for the death you just blame yourself for not being able to do the things you wanted with these people and uh yeah it really really did hurt so that was something i never experienced in my life and it was definitely the worst period of my life i would say um and it took me ages to get over that i distanced myself from my my mom my brother um which is unhealthy but you deal with things in your own way like you know the human brain works in weird and strange ways but you know, I'm I'm you know on good terms with my mom and my brother now. I see them regularly, and um, yeah, like that's all good now. But after that, I moved into a house which you'll have seen me bitching about on Twitter quite a lot if you follow me, because uh, it was horrendous. We had so many problems. I moved in with six others. Uh, you know, most of them were good friends that I'd either made in Sunderland or Gosforth, but uh, it, it, a couple of the relationships within the house turned pretty sour. Uh, I'll explain a little bit of that like in a sec, but yeah, the house itself, we had gas leaks, boiler breakdowns, we had mice, holes in the wall, it, oh my god, <sighs> literally don't rush into a decision, if you're, if you're going to get accommodation, like a lot of my friends at university uh, have had problems of their own and they've rushed getting into a place just for the sake of getting into one and they've regretted it, and it's, yeah, like... You can get some really, really shit landlords, and I'm sure that's the same wherever in the world. Like, just try and really thoroughly look at the place before you actually go and live there, um, because, or else you get like problems. Well, you won't always, of course. Some sometimes you can have a really, really good placement, but uh, sometimes it can be absolutely shit. But yeah, the relationships in the flat turn sour. Um, <laughs> one thing that. I wouldn't recommend anyone to do is get in a relationship with one of your flatmates. I didn't, but two of the people that were living in our, our house did. And yeah, they just cut themselves away from everyone and turned everyone within the house against each other because of it. And oh my God, it was just horrendous. So yeah, try, <laughs> try not to live with someone who's got in a relationship with someone in your, your house. Cause my God, it just doesn't work. Sometimes it might, but in my experience and other people that I know's experience, it just doesn't. It turns everything to shit, to be uh, perfectly honest. So yeah, that wasn't a great time in my life. Um, felt very depressed and that, very alone. Um, even though, like, you know, I, I could still talk to aunt, I could still talk to my brother, a couple of mates or whatever. You still feel really cut off, really alone because you're, you're living there and you're living in a hostile, well, it's not hostile, but it's just a, a terrible environment where... You, you know you don't even speak to some of the flatmates um so it, it just turns the atmosphere poisonous and it's just really really awful so yeah i was just cooped up in my room a lot of the time I, I would go out meet other friends but you know for large portions of the day i would end up just sitting in my room um and yeah just you know think negatively about myself and yeah depression's a really hard thing to talk about uh like it's different it affects people completely differently some sometimes you know you can have mild forms of it sometimes it's a lot worse i've never thankfully got to the point where i've wanted to kill myself or even physically harm um but I i've still felt really really shit about myself and it it's just horrible it feels like you're you're out of your own mind and y you're not you it's just really, really hard to ex explain what it is. Like, if you've been through it, then I, I know how you're feeling, uh, or I know certainly large portions of it. As I say, it affects everyone differently, so you can't know for 100% what someone's going through. But it, 
it's also hard opening up about it and talking about it and uh, that makes it worse when you keep it to yourself you keep it bottled up that's not healthy so i would suggest if anyone is going through depression or low self-esteem talk to someone whether it be an advisor a, a close family or friend or something like open up it can help like i have opened up to close friends before when i felt really really depressed um and it, it's helped it really does help uh, you kind of get on with life and get through it sort of so yeah now i've moved into this place i'm here for five weeks temporarily and then i move on to uh well a place literally within this apartment block with one of my good friends jack from university and uh yeah it should be a lot better than last year hopefully i'll be a lot more positive hopefully i'll be able to get over a lot of my issues with self-confidence with uh, feeling ugly things like that hopefully i can you know drive through them and uh you know actually <laughs> get get the important things in life uh in which you know everyone wants like a, a good job a, a family things like that like start thinking about life after education and yeah get on with it and do something do something good and uh not waste the life that you have so uh yeah th this is very very deep i realize but it, you know it feels good to get it out off your chest and i'm glad i've done this my god it's 30 32 minutes it's coming up to didn't expect that so i apologize you've had to literally well if you're here then wow i admire you for the full 32 minutes you've uh, managed to listen to me drawl on about my life but hopefully this has helped someone out there like, if it's helped at least one person then i'm i'm delighted because yeah i honestly i know i know how hard things can be and i'm sure a lot of people do who are watching and a lot of people who aren't watching will know so yeah it's hard opening up it but as i say you're never alone there's always someone who's been through something that's either similar to you or worse than you so you can kind of be grateful for what you've got but then also improve your your thoughts about yourself or about your personal situation so uh yeah this <laughs> this has went deep enough so i'm just going to end the video now hopefully you have enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already like the video and yeah peace